What's up everybody? Welcome back to Full Tilt Drift and today is a very special day because we're starting the Nova project. So this is shaping up to be the biggest project we've had on the channel yet. This car is getting basically a complete restoration so that I can drive it around and use it as a daily driver. But to use this Nova as a daily driver, it's going to need everything. And when I say everything, I mean pretty much everything but the bench seat is going to need replacing in this car. So first let's take a good look around it and I'll tell you what all is going to get done. So first off is the engine for this thing. It's got the stock 1972 straight six motor, which is like a 4.1 liter straight six. This thing's torquey, but it's by no means fast. Doesn't look real great in the engine bay either, but it does leave plenty of room on both sides to work on it, which is nice. But that's gotta go. So we're taking this motor and it's going out. And going in its place is going this, a 1993 LT1 out of a Firebird. V8 already has aluminum heads on it, it's high compression build from factory, about 350 horsepower and it should do a great job. Now these are the notorious engines with the OptiSpark distributor down here behind the crankshaft where you have to pull the water pump and the crankshaft pulley off to get to the stupid distributor. But we'll deal with that when it becomes a problem because right now I'm just stoked on having a V8 for the Nova. We've also picked up this T56 to go behind it, so we're going to have a six-speed manual swap going in the automatic Nova, which is going to be awesome. So I really like driving manual even down here with traffic in Southern California, so I really wanted to do a manual swap when V8 swapping Nova. So I found this T56 for a great price, and it's just the right type of T56 to go on this LT1 instead of an LS1 motor. So the engine's still on the stand because we need to do a little bit more work to it before it goes on the engine, plug some smog holes and reroute some coolant lines basically, but that's about it. Then we can work on getting that shoved in the car. Another of the really big problems with our Nova is that it has four-wheel drum brakes, and for any of you who have driven a car with four-wheel drum brakes, you know how sketchy that is. We're pretty irresponsible on this channel, but we're definitely not about to go putting 350 horsepower in a car with four-wheel drum brakes, especially if we plan on adding power to that later, which we do. So to remedy that situation, I bought a four-wheel disc brake conversion from Right Stuff Detailing from Summit.com. It cost about a grand, so it wasn't cheap by any means, but four-wheel disc brakes is gonna stop this thing a lot safer than four drums. So you can see I've got these Right Stuff boxes for the four-wheel disc brake conversion back here, and I've also got Hotchkiss suspension for this thing. So after driving the Nova around, it was very clear to me that I was not going to be happy with the suspension on that thing as a daily driver. I like sports car suspension, and that thing would lean over and put the door handles on the ground every time I tried to go around a sharp curve. So to fix that situation, I got that Hotchkiss suspension. So what are we doing today? So since we're doing a manual swap on this thing, I just got the automatic transmission brake pedal taken out of there and put the manual transmission brake pedal in along with the clutch pedal. The clutch pedal and brake pedal ride on the same little pin, so you had to do them both at the same time. Plus this huge pedal didn't leave room for the clutch pedal, so you had to put a manual transmission pedal in, which is shorter. Now that we're done with that for the day, we're gonna go ahead and start with the brake swap. We're taking the brake booster out first because I already got the brake pedal disconnected from it when I was changing the pedal out. So the brake booster can come out next. We're also gonna loosen the engine mounts and the transmission mount so that we can get that pulled out of there right away when we get an engine hoist in here. And then hopefully by that time, we'll be able to plop the new engine right in after it. So it is super hot down here today, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this thing and throw it on a time lapse for you guys so you can see. And if anything interesting happens, I'll be sure to let you know. All of this is coming out of there. So I got the brake booster out and the master cylinder, but I couldn't get the proportioning valve because this brake hose right here just completely rounded off when I tried to get it. So instead the proportioning valve is stuck in here for now. I'm probably going to have to cut the line right here and then reflare it and put a new fitting on because this fitting is just completely trash. Since I don't have that much longer to work on the car today, what we're gonna do now is get this engine ready to pull out. To do that, we're gonna loosen up the engine mounts, get all the hoses and cables off the car that we can, and then hopefully next time when we come to get this thing out, it'll just be ready to pick up and pull right out of the car. 